If you want to be a better artist, be more consistent, and be happy with your work, you have to have these five habits. One, do not wait for inspiration. The worst thing that you could do is just wait for inspiration to come to you. It's not going to come like that. Does motivation or inspiration to go to the gym just strike you out of nowhere? No. So why wouldn't having a consistent art practice be any different? You have to practice your craft to be ready when inspiration comes. If you are practicing regularly, you will start making connections between things and you will have inspiration. Inspiration just doesn't come out of nowhere. It's not some muse that chooses you. You have to make it happen. You simply have to just do the work and keep on studying and making connections and making mistakes and let inspiration spring from the graveyard of your mistakes. Two, create a ritual of least resistance. Treat your practice as sacred. Making art can be emotional, therapeutic, and often spiritual, and you should treat that practice with care. And if you want to be consistent, you have to treat your practice as sacred. We all seek a flow state when we're making things. It happens and it feels good. And then once you've had that flow state happen, you want it again. But that doesn't come unless you practice. And the easiest way to make your practice consistent is by removing any boundaries. So, for instance, if you need a clean space to do anything to get your work done, then make sure that you're cleaning your space before you end. To create a ritual around your practice, make it something that you do regularly. For instance, I get up in the morning, I make my coffee, and then I sit down at my desk, and then I start working. If my desk is messy, I have to clean it first. So I should be cleaning my desk or making sure that it's tidy the night before. And that will lower my barrier of entrance to working. If I need to paint, I have to get everything out of my drawer to paint. I have to set up my easel. I have to make sure that I have prepped canvases or surfaces to make that easier for myself so that I don't put it off. I make sure that the day that I'm going to be painting, everything is set up the night before. That means that I will be able to sit down and dive right into that painting and I won't have to think about what paints I need, what brushes I'm going to be using, where I'm going to be sitting, how I'm going to be doing it. I don't have to think about anything except for the painting itself. Three, copy others. I've talked about this a lot before, and I'm going to say it again. You should be doing master copies of any one that you like. Study the anime that you like, the TV shows, the books, the movies, the painters, the paintings, the drawings, the illustrations, the comic books, whatever you like. Study it. Four, seek out a community. This can be difficult. It can be hard. Artists are <laughs> often introverts. I know I am myself. And having to talk to people about my art is difficult. It feels very vulnerable. But having other people around that you can talk to will make you a better artist. Have friends online or in person. Find communities around your favorite art YouTubers. Um, I know people have discords where you can make friends with other artists who like similar things to you. Proco has places where you can post your work and get help from a community. You need to be exposed to different artists, different ways of thinking about art and making art as well as different schools of thought about art. So not everyone is going to think the same way about art as you. 
someone may think that abstract art is the pinnacle of art and that is the best thing to ever happen and they love it or it could be someone who hates it with every fiber of their being and thinks that abstract art isn't beautiful and can't be beautiful and isn't artistic and you need to be doing representational work or someone who hates pottery or whatever having people around you to challenge the ideas that you have about art will make you a better artist because you are thinking critically about what you do and how you think about it you will have a nuanced and different perspective on art than anyone else around you if you are listening to multiple different voices art is not just a visual language it can communicate different philosophies and you need to know what you are trying to communicate and how you are doing that and you get that by listening to other artists five consume and create just like copying other artists you have to consume media you have to consume everything around you you can't just mindlessly consume things you have to be thinking about the things that you create you have to find things that resonate with you and challenge you and make you inspired and make you wonder how did they do that how did that happen and when you find these things you can deconstruct them and synthesize them by copying it's why copying is so important but you can also just think about them deeply and that will inform your philosophy it shouldn't just be other artists other visual artists that you are looking at and drawing inspiration from or consuming not just visual artists on instagram or whatever don't pay attention to likes and social media that's not what this is about consume things that resonate with you whether it's nature or movies street signs architecture bridges whatever you want it needs to resonate with you on a deeply personal level if you work on these five habits you will be a better artist you'll be able to make art more consistently and art that you are happier with but remember you will make mistakes you will make bad art that is part of the process don't give up go make some art i don't know if forums are still a thing why am i talking about forums i'm so old making art can be emotional therapeutical therapeutical therapeutic